the demons were crushed by Gao Miao's second attack, leaving a crater mark and blood splatters on the ground. This angered and insulted the Sky Elephant Great Demon, who expressed his disbelief that Gao Miao could defeat the six of them with just one palm strike. As a result, the Sky Elephant Great Demon activated his giant elephant stepping sky technique and simultaneously yelled that Gao Miao was underestimating him, resulting in a terrifying, massive version of the Sky Elephant Great Demon looming menacingly behind him. Shortly after that, the gigantic green palm of the Dryad Wizard stomped the Sky Elephant Great Demon to the ground, breaking trees and tearing stones as if it were nothing. The serpent-headed great demon and the horned bull great demon were both shocked as they witnessed the sky elephant great demon being crushed to the ground, which they believed was impossible, and wondered when the dryad had become so strong. From a distance of a thousand miles, Gao Miao immobilized the sky elephant, leaving it severely injured on the ground. The other demons angrily protested to Qi Ling, questioning why he had underestimated the dryad's powers, to which Qi Ling sweated because he had difficulty explaining. The horned bull great demon ran as fast as he could while yelling that the dryad was a thousand-year demon king, and the serpent-headed great demon responded that she couldn't win. Gao Miao wondered why they were fleeing and laughed at them because of the master's endless demon power, which he could use endlessly with his demon palm. He wondered who could escape from him. The other demons flew as fast as they could, and others ran as if their lives depended on it. The Dryad only had 600 years of demon power, so his 1000-year demon power was not cultivated by himself but by the rhinoceros-like demon. He was determined to find out more about him. But when the rhinoceros-like demon looked back, he was surprised that several blazing demon palms were going after them as they screamed that it was impossible to use so much demon power and not be afraid to run out of it. The three-headed squid demon just yelled to hurry and run away but the demon palms of the dryad continued to blaze and stomp everything in their way, resulting in fiery destruction. Chi Ling knew that the dryad could kill his enemy in a thousand miles by relying on the trees as eyes and ears. As the fire grew taller, he was burning the trees using his wooden aid with three feathers from his wings on it as he tried to escape beyond the range of his magical powers, which he thought were useless no matter how much you ran. Chi Ling sighed, believing that he was safe now, thanks to the time they bought him, and he was now 2,000 miles away from the tree governess palace. But the thorny vines still found Chi Ling and wrapped themselves tighter around his hands, waist, and feet, causing him to drop his wooden aid with a clatter. Even from a distance, Gao Miao's laugh could be heard by Chi Ling. He thought it would be okay if he was 2,000 miles away and assuming that his level 2 father of the myriad trees was fake, while Chi Ling struggled to get rid of the vines. Chi Ling yelled Gao Miao's name as the vines reached for his neck. Gao Miao smirked and told him that he just learned how to walk a dog and let him run for a while so that he could take a few more laps, while his massive giant foot raised and creaked. Gao Miao viciously smiled with his fist closed as he watched Chi Ling struggle on a floating screen and told him that other than the gifted power, the dryad mastered a lot of small spells. Although they aren't powerful, they are very practical, and wood control was one of them. The tree mimicked Gao Miao's closed fist as he continued that the wood control technique allowed him to control the trees whose demon power was lower than his. After he reached 1,500 demon power, he could move the 1,000 years old tree where the tree governess palace was located, and that way, he wouldn't be limited by the original range and could use ancient trees wherever and whenever he wanted. Qi Ling pleaded for his life and told Gao Miao that his aunt was a close attendant of the Black Mountain Demon King. He continued to bargain that he would tell him that he had something the Black Mountain Demon King wanted. But before he could finish his sentence, Chi Ling screamed as the massive demon fist of Gao Miao hit him, and his feathers blew up. Back at the Tree Governess Palace, they feasted over the great demons that had 900 years of demon power, whose flesh contained pure demon power and was very nourishing. On the other hand, Nye Xiaoqian thought to herself that her old master had really done it. She continued that not only did he kill Qi Ling and other great demons, but he also shared their demon meat with them. Gao Miao sat comfortably on his throne, surrounded by giddily ghosts who served him food, with Nan above him. Her eyes gleamed with excitement as she savored the flavor of the demon meat in her mouth and wanted to eat them all. Gao Miao thought to himself about what Qi Ling had told him, that he had something the Black Mountain Demon King wanted. Though he didn't say it clearly, according to the original plot, the demon king wanted Nye Xiaoqian, and he smiled with the thought of Nye Xiaoqian. The ghost beside him asked Gao Miao what he was thinking about, to which he replied, nothing. As soon as he looked at Xiao Xue and asked what had happened, he
He was jaw-dropped because she was glowing, and part of her seemed to be vaporized. He gazed at the others as they were also glowing and vaporizing. One of the ghosts explained that the female ghost needed to constantly absorb yang energy from mortals and reconcile the yin and yang to maintain their ghost body. But since Gao Miao, their master, forbade them from absorbing yang energy, they became gradually unable to maintain a ghost body. The other ghost cheerfully said to him that he doesn't have to worry, even if their bodies are incomplete, they could still serve him. Gao Miao responded that it wouldn't work, and if they accidentally touched the sunlight in this condition, they would immediately go to the afterlife. He continued to think to himself that he couldn't also let them absorb the yang energy from the mortals. He called for Nana and referred to her as Fatsy, asking if she had any ideas. Nana, whose eyes glowed as she viewed the original plot, replied that the dryad which ordered other female ghosts to absorb the yang energy of the mortals to maintain their ghost body. Later, after Yen Qixia killed the dryad witch, Nye Xiaoqian relied on Ning Kaichen to replenish her yang energy, while the other female ghost was exorcised by Yen Qixia's Taoist Salvation Sutra. Gao Miao continued talking with Nana as they were in trouble. His body demon didn't have yang energy and he couldn't let them absorb yang energy from Ning Kaichen or let Qi Xia exorcise them. Nana responded that Owen's yang energy was too strong for them, and they do not have virtual source, leaving the female ghosts teary-eyed and worried. But a female ghost cited that there was another way other than absorbing yang energy but got interrupted. Little Tangxiang slipped and covered her mouth, as she was told not to speak nonsense. Gao Miao wondered and asked her what the other way was. Gao Miao asked them if there was any other way that they needed him to help. The female ghost responded that if a thousand-year demon king could give them spiritual energy to bathe their ghost bodies and allow their bodies to turn into in ghost bodies, only then could they escape danger. The other female ghost replied anxiously that he didn't need to listen to her. She continued that to let a normal ghost body become a in ghost body, it would require an enormous amount of spiritual energy, and even a thousand-year demon king would have to rest for months to recover. She added that as slaves, they were of low status and not worth enough for a master to do that for them. Gao Miao smirked, thinking it was something more serious. He confidently replied that their master had a great amount of magical power and that his spiritual energy reproduced continuously and endlessly, so he would never run out of it. While Nana agreed, feeling annoyed, the female ghosts wanted to suck everything from Gao Miao, and these female ghosts were a thousand years early. Little Tianxiang jumped happily with her hands up high and told her sister Xiao Xue that their master would be able to do it, while she sighed and covered her face. After some time, little Tianxiang sat closely in front of Gao Miao, and his eyes closed and chest glowed brightly as he released his spiritual energy in a smoky green aura around them. Little Tianxiang inhaled his spiritual energy and closed her eyes, telling Gao Miao that it was too full, and she couldn't take it anymore. All the other female ghosts were happy to witness that it worked while Nye Xiaoqian beside them crossed her arms and annoyed that they really needed to stick so close to each other. Gao Miao stood up because little Tianxian's body couldn't take in that much spiritual energy at once, and he suggested that they would have to split it into a few more sessions. However, Gao Miao was interrupted and surprised as little Tianxian kissed him on his cheek and thanked him. Little Tianxian smiled, and their master was still wide-eyed. As a result, the other female ghosts ran to him because they wanted to kiss and absorb his spiritual energy too. Nye Xiaoqian continued to be annoyed and thought that the other female ghosts weren't embarrassed, and did they really need to be licentious? Nana, who was beside Nye Xiaoqian, asked her if she was going to go over there as well, as if Nana could be heard by her. Nye Xiaokolin stomped her foot while she waited and wondered if the old monster's body could handle that many ghosts. She continued to leave first and would come later for him after he was done resting. Also, Nana wondered when the little female ghost started to care about the master. The night sky was illuminated by a celestial glow, with the crescent moon and stars casting a gentle radiance through the thin veil of clouds above. Gao Miao was covered in kiss marks all over his face and chest, as he was confident and able to successfully go for Xiao Qian's route. Nana thought that it was strange for an elite girl like Nye Xiao Qian. Wouldn't it usually be a lot harder for someone like Gao Miao? Even if the master was good in every aspect, it still shouldn't be this easy to make her heart flutter. Gao Miao looked at Nana and questioned if Nye Xiaoqian would be one of those girls from the modern world that you have to be rich and handsome, also you need to be tall, have a good education, a house, and a car. He smirked as he explained that his world isn't that materialistic, and the girls here are pure as heck. As long as you're good-looking and you've saved them once before, chances would increase drastically in your favor. 
he added as he walked on the forest path between bushes and trees, that as long as you're good looking, then all is good and well. Nana hurriedly caught up with Gao Miao. The moon cast an ethereal glow and shone through the window where Gao Miao and Nye Xiaoqian sat comfortably. Nye Xiaoqian sparkled beautifully, and Gao Miao and Nana were both mesmerized by her beauty. Gao Miao told her that her body could receive spiritual energy better than Xiao Xue and little Tianxiang and that it seemed like she would receive enough first and turn into a Yin body. Nana insinuated that a guy and girl alone together in a room would be bad for the mission and that it wouldn't work out. Gao Miao cleared his throat, sat in front of Nye Xiaoqian, and told her that the moon tonight looked bright, asking for a walk outside. He also thought that absorbing the moonlight would benefit her into becoming a Yin as well. Nye Xiaoqian blushed as she agreed. Gao Miao and Nye Xiaoqian walked outside on the forest path between bushes and trees, where Nana flew behind, cheering for Gao Miao for a great job. The mood between them was great, and Gao Miao could use this chance to seize Nye Xiaoqian. Gao Miao gazed at Nana and responded that he wanted to. He had only known how to make fights, but chasing after a girl was something he had never tried before. Gao Miao added he don't even know what to say in situations like this as he sweated waiting for Nana to search the floated pink screen for some situations like these. Nana cheerfully smiled and found something. The floating pink screen was near Gao Miao as he coughed and grabbed Nye Xiaoqian. With a smile so big, Gao Miao told her that the moonlight today was so pretty as he pointed with his hand. All of a sudden, the moon disappeared behind a dark cloud, casting a shadow over the previously illuminated night sky, leaving Gao Miao and Nana disappointed. Fortunately, Nye Xiaoqian agreed and found it pretty. Nana cheered with pom-poms that there was definitely no moon, but she agreed. According to the data, receiving a reply like that means success, and she continued congratulating Gao Miao for the joyous event that their mission would most likely be completed. The night was still dark, with the moon and stars shining above, as Ning Kaichen walked alone on the pavement. He wandered aimlessly until he found himself close to Lady Xiaoqin's chamber. Then, he realized that coming there in the middle of the night would be bad if someone saw him, so he shook his head and sighed. Ming Kaichen overheard a voice discussing the beauty of the moonlight. Meanwhile, Nana, who had a floating pink screen, wondered whether the mission was still incomplete because, based on Gao Mayo's attitude, Nye Xiaoqian should have agreed. Nana suggested that Gao Mayo try something else since Nye Xiaoqian probably didn't understand the meaning behind the beauty of moonlight. Gao Miao agreed putting his hands on Nye Xiaoqian's shoulders, which frightened her. He asked her if she knew the velocity of the falling speed of cherry blossoms, leaving Nye Xiaoqian confused because she didn't know what velocity was. Nana glared at Gao Miao in frustration, thinking it was an awkward and shameful question. Fortunately, Nye Xiaoqian responded that she could find a cherry tree and test it later if Gao Miao wanted to know, which shocked Nana. However, the mission was still incomplete, and Nana wondered, looking at the floating pink screen, where it went wrong. Ning Kaichen tried to listen in on their conversation while hiding behind the trees. An hour later, Gao Miao was talking about TV, anime, and other performances that he had tried but weren't good enough and had no effect. Nana stepped in, saying that his shameful lines could make Nye Xiaoqian's head spin, or her favorability points might be full. Gao Miao realized that it was getting late and allowed her to return to her room while he sipped water from his hand. Gao Miao spit out the water when Nana suggested a real confession rather than stolen lines because the mission was still incomplete. Gao Miao replied that it wouldn't work because he remembered someone saying that love is war, and the party who confesses first loses. He continued that if it's a battle, he could never lose, while Nana was exhausted and facepalmed. Suddenly, Gao Miao was determined that love was too troublesome but thought of it as a battle, like the Black Mountain Demon King who tried to get Nye Xiaoqian in the original plot. Nana whispered to Gao Miao that someone was peeping, and Gao Miao knew it was Ning Kaichen. Ning Kaichen was afraid of disturbing them, so he covered himself up. Although Nye Xiaoqian would have noticed him long ago, with his mortal body at this distance, he shouldn't have heard anything they were saying. Behind the tree, Ning Kaichen fell asleep while eavesdropping for half an hour due to his weak physique. Gao Miao thought that it seemed Ning Kaichen was still interested in Nye Xiaoqian. A few days later, inside the tree governess palaces, Gao Miao called for Ning Kaichen because he had something to tell him. He presented him with a map on his table. Since ancient times, the love between humans and ghosts has been unacceptable to the world because of their different physiques, and there might be trouble when they try to give birth to their heirs. Ning Kaichen asked Gao Miao if he had a way to save Xian Qing, pleading to save her as she was his god-granddaughter. 
Gao Miao told him not to worry because he called him here for a solution, he remembered that there was a karma temple around a thousand miles to the west and that there was a sweeper monk who had profound power who might be able to help solve the problem. The target of the Black Mountain Demon King was Nia Xiao Qian, and they would have a battle here. According to the original plot, to win the battle, Gao Miao needed to acquire a treasure that belonged to Ning Kaichen and was located at the Karma Temple. This was why Gao Miao told Ning Kaichen he must accompany Xiao Qin to the Karma Temple. Ning Kaichen agreed, believing that Gao Miao, except for being a little pervert, was indeed not evil, and it seemed like what he and his big brother Qi Xiao had said was true. There was a certain great monk who possessed the body of the Dryad. He also believed going to the temple with Xiao Qing would be relaxing because his past memories had been constantly reappearing these days. Half a month later, Ming Kaichen returned to Gao Miao, shocking him. He told Gao Miao that Xiao Qing and he didn't receive the blessing of the sweeper monk. This wasn't right, and Gao Miao was perplexed as he placed his hand on his chin, believing that sweeper monks were kind and compassionate, and there should be no reason for him to refuse them. In the original plot, Ning Chaichen didn't dare to let Nye Xiao Qian give birth, and they came to that temple by chance. It was in this karma temple that they were given a pair of Bodhi bracelets that were as well blended as water and milk, which recreated Nye Xiao Qian's body with Ning Chaichen's blood and bones. Those bracelets were each inlaid with a Bodhi seed that could restrain demons. It was because of these bracelets that Ning Chaichen and Nye Xiao Qian could join the final battle with the Black Mountain Demon King. Gao Miao was in a crowded place with Nana and it bothered him that the item was originally prepared for Ning Kaichen, but the sweeper monk couldn't give it to him. The Bodhi bracelet broke, and he continued to think if it was possible that Nye Xiao Qian had to go with Ning Kaichen to get it. Nana suggested just letting them go there together. Gao Miao gave a deathly stare while Nana's body quivered in fear. No matter which two people got the Bodhi bracelet, they would be in harmony with each other and exchange their blood and bones. Gao Miao added that he wouldn't act carelessly again. Since Ning Kaichen couldn't get it, then Gao Miao would get it personally. He smirked confidently, thinking that they were just mere NPCs who give treasure and hoped that he wouldn't fail to recognize a favor. They arrived at the Karma Temple, where there was a closed gate with two giant tripods with smoky incense. The building was warmed by the sun's rays as they shone on it. The Buddha's halo above the pavilion was shooting up into the sky, and Gao Miao believed that the bracelet he was looking for was here. He heard someone cough but this made Gao Miao distraught. Then he saw a monk sweeping and coughing as well. The monk smiled and referred to him as the donor, telling him that the things in the pavilion were treasures for a pair of people who truly loved each other, and if they had nothing to do with the donor, they should just go back. Nana was worried as Gao Miao couldn't move his body due to a strong sense of oppression. These sweeper monks were all hidden masters, and their power was really terrifying. Gao Miao respectfully complied with the sweeper monk and said that he would be leaving now. Suddenly, he could move his body again, while Nana was confused because she thought they would be stealing the bracelet and why they would be leaving abruptly. Gao Miao was walking back to the crowded place from the Karma Temple when Nana asked him if the old monk knew what was right and wrong and what they should do. He then pondered about the monk being an NPC but with just coughing once could make him a mobile that even the Black Mountain Demon King couldn't do that. While Nana flew to catch up with Gao Miao, he continued thinking that it had to be a couple who truly loved each other but wondered if it must really be Ning Kaichen and Ye Xiao Qian. Gao Miao was determined to get the Bodhi bracelet, and he would find a random true love couple and let them try it again for him while Nana noticed Ning Kaichen from the crowd. Ning Kaichen was walking through the crowd while carrying a large scroll but not as heavy as his emotions. He arrived at a shopkeeper and inquired if he accepts paintings, to which he asked to see what painting it would be. The painting was a portrait of Nye Xiao Qian, and the shopkeeper was astonished as it was a good painting, good poetry, and a beautiful woman, but since it wasn't made by a famous artist, he offered five silver. Ning Kaichen received it in his hands while the shopkeeper waved him goodbye and asked him to come again next time. Nana whispered to Gao Miao that the girl in the painting was Nye Xiao Qian, to which Gao Miao replied that he saw it too, although he was already with Xiao Qing, he still had Xiao Qian in his heart. Gao Miao continued to ponder if the reason why the old monk didn't give him the bracelet was because of his half-hearted relationship. A few days later, the banners flapped in the wind as they hung beside the table. Nana asked Gao Miao, who was sitting next to the table, if he could really fool Ning Kaichen while wearing a black robe and hat with a mustache. Gao Miao retorted irritably that he had brought a true love couple to see the old monk these past two days, but the old monk refused to give them bracelets because he felt they weren't fated to be together. 
it was clearly stated in the original plot that this thing was specially prepared for Ning Kaichen, the son of the plane of existence, and Gao Miao, while holding his black feather fan, realized the only way was to fool Ning Kaichen. He was determined to break his fantasies about Xiao Qian and that he should only love his god granddaughter. He continued that he had arranged the trap, and they would just have to wait for Ning Kaichen to take the bait. Amidst the crowd, Ning Kaichen walked with his head down, and people were talking about the miraculous master Tian Sun who helped them calculate their love life. They followed his guide and found their true love the next month, and others wanted to try. People inquired where they could find Master Tian Xuan while Ning Kaichen thought one shouldn't believe these rumors about some shady magician. However, these days, Ning Kaichen had experienced a lot of incredible dreamlike moments and met a lot of magical existences like Brother Yan, Xiao Qing, Dryad Grandpa, and Ning Kaichen turned around. He would like to see what kind of cheap trick this magician had up his sleeve so as to avoid the girls being tricked. Ning Kaichen reached for Master Tian Xuan's hands. He then knelt down and pleaded with him to teach him how to teach himself to be free. Ning Kaichen believed that he was really a Taoist master because he could accurately count his life and even clearly understand his thoughts about Xiao Qing and Lady Xiao Qian. Nana, with the floating pink screen, sat beside Gao Miao and told him not to worry about it, but deep inside, he thought to himself that this grandpa had not only read the original plot, but he had also lived with him in the tree governess palace for a long time, except for the color of his underwear. As Nana frantically searched the pink screen for the famous romantic story in the virtual world, Gao Miao pleaded with Fatsy to hurry up because he had run out of things to say. After discovering it, Nana grinned and directed Gao Miao to the screen. Gao Miao discreetly glanced at the pink screen and told Ning Kaichen that in his previous life, he was the crimson pearl immortal grass above the three live stone border at the west of the Spirit Riverbank, and the woman named Nia Xiao Qian was the attendant of the guiding of the Qixia Palace. Because of the handful of dew she poured when she passed by, he was able to get rid of the trees and roots and then turn into a human. Gao Miao continued that the reason why Ning Kaichen couldn't forget Nye Xiao Qian was that she was the one who made him become human, and his feelings towards her were only of gratitude. For Lu Xiao Qing, in this life, he was destined to be with her and marry her. Ning Kaichen sobbed when he realized how pitiful Xiao Qing was in that, despite being with him for a thousand years, he had been ignoring her. He then asked Master Tian Xuan what he should do to show gratitude to Nye Xiao Qian and treat Xiao Qing with kindness. Gao Miao stood and responded that in this town, there's a karma temple and a sweeper monk who possesses incredible power. He then quickly disappeared, but his voice continued that Ning Kaichen should immediately bring Lu Xiao Qing to the temple, the master would give them a pair of Bodhi bracelets, and he should give the bracelets to Nye Xiao Qian to repay her kindness and end this karma. The voice continued that Ning Kaichen must not forget when he presented himself to the master, he must only think of Lu Xiao Qing in his heart and not get distracted by Nye Xiao Qian, as his feelings towards her were only of gratitude, or else everything he'd done would be wasted. Astonished, Ning Kaichen believed Master Tian Xuan was really an immortal. At the Karma Temple, the sweeper monk was convinced that husband and wife truly love each other and only have each other in their hearts. He gave Ning Kaichen and Lu Xiao Qing a pair of Bodhi bracelets, flew towards them, and helped share their blood and bones. Upon receiving them, a bright light emerged from the bracelets, and Ning Kaichen felt like they had been fused together and would never be separated. This was the Bodhi bracelet from the Karma Temple, and he hoped his grandfather could give it to Xiao Qian, as he told Gao Miao under the breathtaking sunset. Gao Miao was holding a pair of bracelets when he realized they had been made especially for him by Ning Kaichen and he was the only person who could have obtained them. So, Gao Miao was perplexed as to why he couldn't give them to her. Ning Kaichen, while holding Lu Xiaoqing's hand, responded that they had received the blessing of the sweeper monk and she had finally got rid of her ghost. They planned to leave the tree governess palace and travel around the world together, hoping that grandpa wouldn't mind. Gao Miao thought Bodhi bracelet was so evil that Ning Kaichen was still hesitating yesterday and now he's head over heels for Lu Xiaoqing. As the lovebirds walked away together, Gao Miao replied he would not stop them if they insist on leaving, Gao Miao clenched his fist with the bracelets and asked Fatsy if there would be any adverse effects if he fused with these bracelets, which a demon fused with a Buddha treasure. Nana replied to Gao Miao not to doubt his professional working ability because according to the information of the Temple of God that he got, there was a God's mission team that entered the demon of Qian's world during the previous transmigration. He stole Ning Saichen's bracelets and merged them with one of his demon subordinates, and later, that demon became a half-demon and half-Buddha who could restrain other demons. 
Gao Miao nodded and trusted Nana this time. Gao Miao cut his palm to fuse his blood into his body as it poured out onto the bracelets on his hand. The humble monk was originally a red string beside Yulao in the sky, who turned into a sweeper monk who looks after the temple. Since the gods ceased to exist, and Yulao died, the only task of this humble monk was to give a pair of Bodhi bracelets to the son of good luck, Ning Kaichen, to protect him. Now that the karma was over, this humble monk could pass away in peace. But as the humble monk faded away inside the temple, he was shocked as it felt that the marriage bracelet that was given the humble monk was contaminated with demon power. The humble monk vanished entirely into the sky, but he was not at ease. As Gao Miao continued to clench the pair of Bodhi bracelets, his body and blood fused, and he screamed while Nana's eyes sparkled gazing at the floating pink screen, which informed Gao Miao that the Dryad character card had evolved once more. The green Mongolian tree seed was at the third energy level, the father of the myriad tree, where the tree body turned into a primitive seed, could possess any extraordinary tree that doesn't have consciousness and gain its full power. Nana was perplexed as to why the green Mongolian tree seed had lost its demon power. Gao Miao evolved into a jade-like seed, which worried Nana. It could sense Gao Miao's breath but was baffled as to why he had evolved into a tree seed. Nana screamed and frantically caught up with Gao Miao as the jade-like seed flew up into the sky. The jade-like seed went inside the tree of the governess tree palace. Gao Miao arrived while Nana asked him what had exactly happened. Just like the description on the card, it said that after fusing with the Bodhi bracelet, his demon power was purified and he transformed into a tree seed with the nature of Buddha. Simultaneously, the ability of the father of myriad trees had evolved, and Gao Miao could merge into any extraordinary ancient tree with no consciousness to obtain its full power. Nana screamed in fear, even though it sounded good, Gao Miao's ability was still deteriorating. How would they ever defeat the Black Mountain Demon King at this rate? In this world, there still existed an extraordinary Bodhi Buddha tree that was made from a Bodhi Buddha tree from a Bodhi seed that fell from the sky, and that it should be around 2000 years old. If they could find it, they would definitely be able to defeat the Black Mountain Demon King. Gao Miao and Nana followed the memory within the Bodhi bracelet to find the Bodhi Buddha tree, and they left Ching in town, crossing the hills, jumping over the valley, and heading to the far west. Then they crossed the Luo River going by Baimo River. Lastly, they flew over the large swamp where monsters ran amok. Finally, Gao Miao and Nan arrived at the magnificent and ethereal 2,000-year-old Bodhi Buddha tree. The jade-like seed from Gao Miao entered the 2,000-year-old Bodhi Buddha tree and fused with it. As they became one, Gao Miao expressed regret at having to give up the extraordinary ancient tree in the tree governess palace. Now, Gao Miao, who had blonde hair and marks on his forehead, had become a demon king with 2,000 years of demon power and possessed the Bodhi Buddha tree, which specialized in restraining demons. After all, according to the original plot, Yin Qi Xiao would be the main strength, and Ning Keish's tiger demon would be responsible for debuffing the Black Mountain Demon King, and they would win in the end because it doesn't make sense for Gao Miao to lose. Back at the Tree Governor's Palace, Dryad was asked about Qi Ling, Mei Wei, and Mang Jiao's whereabouts. It had been a long time since the Dryad had tribute Yang Qi to the Black Mountain Temple. It was the Demon King's envoy, Ape Demon, who continued that a small demon reported that Qi Ling, Mei Wei, and Mang Jiao had disappeared, and their cave had also been razed to the ground. Even the White Toad Demon King's envoy came to the Black Mountain Temple to ask for the whereabouts of the Golden Rhinoceros, Sky Elephant, and Black Crow, the Ape Demon added. Gao Miao sat beside Nye Xiao Qian brushed it off that they would talk about it later, and proceeded to ask about the thing he was holding. He wondered if it was the imperial decree of the Black Mountain Demon King. He also thought to himself that the speed of information transmission in this world was really slow. Chi Ling and the others had been dead for months, and this envoy only got the news and rushed here. Gao Miao inquired if the Black Mountain Demon King had instructions for him, which annoyed the ape demon because of the proud dryad considering that the king's decree was a major thing and all questions would be asked after the decree was announced. The ape demon was hoping for a satisfactory confession, but if not, he would let him know the demon king envoy's greatness. The demon king's envoy announced the decree of his majesty, the demon king. The king had heard that there was a female ghost whose name was Nye Xiao Qian with refined nature and dignified appearance in the tree governess palace. Nye Xiao Qian was now summoned to enter the Black Mountain Temple and serve him. Nye Xiao Qian, received the imperial decree, the ape demon said, grinning. 
he had worked hard for several months searching for her and finally found the girl named Mia Xiaoqian who was born on the darkest day in the darkest month of the darkest year. He didn't expect her to be dead and a ghost, which was why it took so long for the ape demon to find her. When Nia Xiaoqian looked at the old monster, she sighed, knowing that the old master couldn't save her because they'd be going up against the Black Mountain Demon King. She then wondered what she should expect from the old monster after only taking a glimpse of him. She continued that this was good, that he didn't resist the Black Mountain Demon King for her, at least he and the sisters in the Tree Governess Palace could survive while Nia Xiaoqian was almost standing up. Before she went further, Gao Miao stopped her by putting a hand on her shoulder, and he laughed about the imperial decree, claiming that in the tree governess palace, his words should be the imperial decree. Gao Miao pointed his finger with powerful light on it as he trashed the black mountain demon king and the imperial decree. This powerful light on his finger stroked a massive beacon of his power directed at the demon king's envoy. The ape demon struggled to block the attack and was surprised by Dryad's actions and courage to defy the demon king's order. Gao Miao sarcastically asked him if he knew what he was doing. Gao Miao's beacon of light power pierced through the chest of the demon king's envoy, and then blood rushed out of the ape demon, who continued to ask him who gave him the courage to be arrogant in front of him and the black mountain demon king. Gao Miao's massive beacon of light was so powerful that it went through the wall after piercing through the demon king's envoy. Or is it Lian Jingru, he added. Despite having a severed hand and a massive hole in his chest, the demon king's envoy stood up and wondered how the dryad could do this. He then crumbled to the ground as the demon king's envoy pleaded that he couldn't kill him or else the king wouldn't forgive him. Gao Miao thought as his pointed finger sparkled with light as Nye Xiaoqian attempted to restrain the old monster and warned him not to act impulsively because if he killed the demon king's envoy, he would have to battle the demon king until one of them died. Gao Miao responded that if he wanted to use the Black Mountain Demon King to pressure, he apologized because they had found the wrong person. He then vehemently threatened not only the King Demon's envoy, but he would also kill the Black Mountain Demon King, that even his mother can't save him. Still at the Tree Governess Palace, the ghost servants were seated in front of the feast table. On every plate, the meat was thick and quite juicy. Gao Miao's face turned red as he devoured the large, juicy meat and held a glass of wine in the other hand. He also encouraged the others to eat and asked why they weren't using their chopsticks. The ghost servants were anxious, as their master was too hasty this time. The Black Demon King's messenger was not someone they could kill. Nye Xianqian was eerily quiet and anxious as well. While holding a cup in his hand, Gao Miao continued to drink and wondered why it was such a big deal since the messenger was just a demon made of black stone. He also reassured them that if the man dared to enter the tree governess palace to cause more trouble, he would undoubtedly receive more than he bargained for. However, Gao Miao soon fell to the table and passed out from intoxication. The sight of their master intoxicated with alcohol left the ghostly servants in a state of shock. They questioned whether he dozed off while snoring like a baby. The serene night sky with its thin clouds was illuminated by the crescent moon and countless stars. Someone descended quickly and discreetly from the tree governess palace. Her feet landed softly on the ground but then Ye Xiaoqian was stopped when they called for her. The other sister's servant ghost descended as well, trying to confront her, asking whether she was trying to escape. They told her that their master had killed the ape demon for her, and now she was secretly leaving on her own. They were all scared because the master had messed with the Black Mountain Demon King, and logically escaping the tree governess palace before the demon king vents his anger on them was the best choice. One of their sisters added that if they left now, even as a ghost, their hearts would never be at peace. However, others defended their master, saying that during this whole time, they were treated extremely well, and they must remember his kindness in their hearts. He even helped them the getting ghost body. If they left now, their heart would never be at peace. The servant ghosts were looking for Nye Xiaoqian to discuss future plans for going against the Black Mountain Demon King especially since Nye Xiaoqian had always been the main leader among them, after being berated by her sisters. Nye Xiaoqian explained that the Black Mountain Demon King's target was her, and as long as she left the palace and used herself as a means to threaten, everyone would be able to survive. This puzzled her sisters as to why the Black Mountain Demon King would send his messenger to bring her back to his palace. If there was something bothering her, she needed to tell them. Nye Xiaoqian shook her head and told them there was no point in telling because they couldn't defeat the Black Mountain Demon King and ask for their return. She then turned her back, telling them to take good care of their master for her and not to tell him what had happened. 
she let him assume that she ran away because she was scared of the Black Mountain Demon King. Suddenly, a familiar voice spoke up about what they couldn't tell to their master, leaving them stunned. Gao Miao descended gracefully from the tree governess palace. He reached the ground and looked at Nana, telling her that he was right, that the female ghost wouldn't betray him. Nana retorted that the tree governess palace was their base camp in this world, and they had to manage it. She also said there shouldn't be any traitors permitted because now that the ape demon was dead, and they had messed with the Black Mountain Demon King, they could act intoxicated and test their loyalty. Gao Miao thanked them with a tap on their heads, saying that the hangover soup was really good, and he felt really energized and clear. Nana wondered as to why they were loyal to him, citing that there was nothing great about Gao Miao, and he didn't have any benefit to them as well. Gao Miao looked at Nye Xiao Qian and told her that he had heard everything, and asked her if it was really because she was scared of the Black Mountain Demon King that she wanted to leave the Tree Governess Palace. She stood there anxiously, looking back at him. Gao Miao went close to her and tapped her head as well, telling her that it seemed like she didn't believe the fact that he wasn't scared of the Black Mountain Demon King. He then explained that he was originally planning to do it a few days later but it seemed like he needed to push it earlier. He decided to do it tomorrow. He would go get that Black Mountain Demon King's dog head back and hang it in the Tree Governess Palace so that they wouldn't have to keep worrying about it. The night was getting darker as stars faded into the dark clouds at the temple surrounded by a large claw-like boulder. Yin Qixia's people were talking and amazed to see His Majesty lock himself in to gather spiritual energy. It seemed like Nye Xiaoqian was very important. Inside, demons were talking over the table with lots of food. One of them expressed how it was unexpected that Nye Xiaoqian was at the Tree Governess Palace and seemed like the Dryad hit the jackpot. They speculated about the reward of the Dryad and the Ape Demon since the Ape Demon was always greedy, while the other was jealous to find a weak monster like the Dryad whom he could bully easily as he pleased. A blazing comet-like object attacked the temple, causing a powerful blast inside. A hand reached for it as they realized it was a head. Every demon was stunned when they saw the ape demon's head and demanded to know who did this. Suddenly, a voice emerged, calling for the Black Mountain Demon King repeatedly, which angered the demons. The voice continued to taunt that the Black Mountain Demon King should come out and retrieve it because his lunchbox was here, which drew the attention of all the guards and demons inside the palace. While Yen Qixia and Gao Miao were inside the temple, Gao Miao instructed Yen Qixia to leave the Black Mountain Demon King to him, while he could have the rest of the small fry Yen Qixia had just recently succeeded in refining the spirit of emptiness. His current state was still unstable, but he didn't have to push himself. If he couldn't win against them, he was given a small pouch placed on his side to use it when he needed. The enraged and intimidating demon charged at them, enclosing them in their own demonic aura. The fierce demons recognized them and lambasted them for disturbing the Black Mountain's Demon King's peace, and that they had just committed a crime. The other demon wondered if they were the ones who killed the ape demon. Gao Miao told Yen Qixia to take them down quickly and not let his majesty get disturbed. He tapped Yen Qixia's shoulder, indicating that he was leaving them to him. Yen Qixia wasted no time and quickly advanced swiftly towards the demons with a blade in his hand. 